This is the same image you saw for parasympathetic, but now this is sympathetic. So the innervation starting from the thoracic going to lumbar spinal cord, and then those preganglionic neurons, you remember for sympathetic, they're short. Short preganglionic fibers with ganglia close to the spinal cord. You already knew that, right? Remember that? So here you see that. This long thing here, actually it's on over here as well. This is a chain of ganglia along your trunk. It's called the sympathetic chain ganglia or trunk. And this is part of the sympathetic nervous system. It's a chain of ganglia close to the spinal cord. The post, and, and there's a few exceptions we'll get to here. The postganglionic neurons, so there's a synapse in many of these ganglia, right? Because you know there's cell bodies inside of ganglia. So there's a synapse, and then the postganglionic fiber is very long and then just synapses directly onto the effector. So for the heart, you actually can see it with this one, right? It looks like this. This is our postganglionic fiber that comes from the chain ganglia. Here is a plexus. Um, and all the organs, the effectors that are innervated. However, there are some exceptions to this. So there are some fibers you can see that run kind of up before they synapse or down, kind of like a plexus, similar in that there's braiding. There's also some fibers that do not synapse in the chain ganglia, but go all the way through and synapse instead in a collateral ganglia collateral on the side, um, a lot of this is your viscera, so the visceral organs. So the digestive system, for example, have collateral ganglia. So the only, the main thing to remember is these are all two neuron pathways. No matter what there is, but with the adrenal medulla is one exception, there is one ganglia for every, the, every single fiber coming from the spinal cord is going to go to, it's going to be one synapse before it gets to the effector. That's either in the chain or collateral. Notice the adrenal medulla is another exception. We'll get back to that. The other tricky thing that's different about the sympathetic nervous system is the where it leaves the spinal cord is a bit more complex. So I'm going to show you a picture here that some of this is familiar, right? You've got dorsal root, dorsal root ganglion, spinal nerve, ventral and dorsal ramus, those things you know. Um, I'm going to draw for you the direction that a, so I can't quite get it there. Let's, I can't do it for myself there. The cell body of a sympathetic preganglionic um, motor neuron would be in the lateral horn. It's going to travel out through the dorsal, I'm sorry, the ventral root. And here it's going through the spinal nerve. Okay, great. We're a spinal nerve. Yay. But nope, we are sympathetic information. So we're actually going to go back this way. What? This is the rami communicans. And we're going to synapse here because here's a ganglia. So yeah, we're going to synapse there, right? I'm going to draw my post ganglionic neuron in a different color. So here is that cell body of the post ganglionic neuron. It's then going to travel out through this rami communicans and then out to the effector. Let's just do that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, one last thing we can add to this 
is we, I, I had in my key terms, if you remember, white com communicons and gray communicons. What might those refer to? Hmm. Well, they might refer to myelinated or non-myelinated axons. You might remember that this preganglionic neuron, oh, that does not show up well enough, is myelinated. So we have myelin on this one here. There's no myelin on that guy there. So what this means is, is this Rami communicons right here with the greenish neuron inside and the myelination, this is gonna be our white communicons. And our other one here is our gray. Just like with the somatic senses, when we come out here, we could either have this go into the ventral ramus or the dorsal ramus to go to the back of the body. So all the rami communicants contain sympathetic information. This is the detail I'm not gonna ask you to know. I want you to have more conceptual understanding, kind of like for the nerve plexus, plexus is in terms of that it's complicated. Um, so the main idea is this top one here is what I just drew for you. Another image of that neuron axon coming out, going through the white communicons, then the gray to then go out into the body. However, you could instead have that information go through the white communicons, then travel up or down to another level of the sympathetic chain ganglia. So a different ganglia in that chain of ganglia to synapse there before it goes out. And that's a way of, right, you integrate potentially information from this guy too, right? So it's a way of integrating and combining, actually more than that, combining information to be carried out to a similar body region. So we, I'll, I'll sh this will make more sense in just a moment. Last one um, that I just want you to know about is that collateral. So in this case, we've got that preganglionic neuron is gonna travel through the white communicons just like before, but instead of synapsing here, it's gonna skip that, but it's gotta synapse somewhere. So it's gonna synapse instead in this collateral ganglia. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do with the sympathetic nervous system anatomy is the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal medulla, can you find it here? It is located on top of the kidney. And if we look at it, where are we coming from? Here. So it's starting right here traveling through, it's hard to see, but I'm telling, it's why I'm telling you, there's no synapse, no synapse, no synapse, no synapse. Oop, there we've got a synapse. So we're gonna start in the lateral horn again with a preganglionic neuron, and that's gonna travel out. And where do we think it's gonna go to? I'm not gonna try to draw adrenal gland. I'm gonna have one pop up. Where is it? on top of the kidneys, little endocrine glands on top of the kidneys. That's where this is. We're gonna have this cell synapse on cells that are within the adrenal medulla. I'm gonna get a different color for our adrenal medulla cells. It's kind of cool is it's thought that this adrenal medulla, medulla means the inside. Um, the adrenal medulla tissue is thought to have developed from the same tissue as ganglia. So it can be thought of as a modified ganglia. 
this, so this is basically our synapse right here, right? All I said all preganglionic neurons have to synapse. If that helps you to think of it that way, it's kind of true. So this is our cell inside the adrenal medulla. This cell is it going to have? Am I going to draw an axon for it? No, it's not nervous tissue. It is a gland. So it is going to release by exocytosis. It's going to release into the bloodstream what? Norepinephrine and epinephrine. These two chemical messengers that you already know something about, right? So if we have this blood vessel, let's say, go out into the body, we now have norepinephrine and epinephrine circulating throughout the entire body where it's going to bind to the heart, the intestines, smooth muscles, uh, pupil muscles, um, everywhere, the recti pili of your, um, that make your hair stand on end. What determines whether it's going to affect a certain organ or not? This is a really good, important question, actually. What determines whether this little molecule can have an effect on cell X? Whether it has a receptor, right? If there's a receptor on here, then there can be a response. That's it. This results in a longer lasting response to a stressor because you have hormones circulating throughout the body. It takes a little bit longer to come about, um, but and that's why you have that, that direct innervation as well. 